Now I want you to picture the scene on a September day in 1297. A massive English army, probably about 20,000 strong, is encamped around Stirling Castle here. On the other side of the river, where you see the tower of the Wallace Monument, that hill is called the Abbey Craig. And the Scottish army was basically lined up along the line running from the foot of the Abbey Craig along to your left. So this was where the Scottish forces were uh, lined up. The English had a problem. If they wanted to attack the Scots, they had to get over to the other side of the river. And there was only this narrow bridge to cross it by. But one of the English commanders, a man with the splendid name of Sir Marmaduke Thwing, <laughs> uh, suggested to the English commander, a man called John de Warren, the Earl of Surrey, that about seven or eight miles further upriver, there were some fords across the fort. And he suggested that if he detached a body of the English army, go upriver, cross at the fords, and then they could come round on the north side and effectively catch the Scottish force in the flank. But Surrey wasn't having any nonsense with that. So the result was that the English army eventually started to cross the river. Now the English army consisted very largely of heavy cavalry, knights in armour, men at arms, very heavily armoured. You only had a narrow wooden bridge that could probably only take two men abreast or one horse abreast crossing at a time. And he had a force of maybe 20,000 men. So as you can imagine, it was the traffic jam of all traffic jams as they were queuing up trying to get over <laughs> to the other side. Meanwhile, the Scottish, lined up here under Wallace and Murray, bided their time and waited. And they waited until roughly half the English army had managed to get over to the other side of the bridge. Now, this area on the other side of the bridge, at that time, was extremely marshy, boggy land. Basically, you would sink up to your knees in mud if you were standing there. And you can imagine if you're in a heavy war horse wearing a suit of armour, a horse is up to its fetlocks in the mud. Not ideal ground for heavy cavalry to operate on. So the Scots waited until about half the English army was over the bridge, and then they came swooping down from their site, running along from the left of the Abbey Craig there. First of all, they came charging down the one bit of solid ground that there was. If you look just beyond the stone bridge, you can see that there is a line of a road running straight up towards the left-hand corner of Abbey Craig. This is called uh, Causeway Head, and this is still the road, but more, that was the line of the only sort of solid ground, the solid causeway through this muddy land. So the Scots came charging down there, and their right flank came sweeping down here to cut the English off to the left, and then charge in along the north bank of the, uh, the south, yes, the north bank of the river. When they reached the English cavalry, they didn't bother going for the men, they just went for the horses. I'm sorry if any of you are animal lovers, but basically they got the horse, the horse collapsed, knight in heavy armour, falls into the mud, can't get up, quite possibly suffocates and drowns in the effort. The result was a complete massacre of the English force. Many of them tried to get back across the river trying to get back over the this one narrow bridge. Of course, you still had half the English army trying to get over in the other direction, so you can imagine <laughs> the chaos. Eventually, the bridge collapsed under the weight of the men trying to get over it. So the bridge collapses into the river. Others dive into the river and try and swim across, but they're weighed down by their armour and their heavy clothes. So nearly all of them drown. So the result was that of the English who actually made it over to the other side, hardly a single one survived the battle. Among those who was killed was probably the most hated man in Scotland at that time, a man called Hugo de Cressingham, who Edward, King Edward had appointed as treasurer of Scotland. In other words, his main job was to collect taxes mm. from the Scots. So he wasn't very popular. Mm. <laughs> and uh, the story is that they actually captured Cressingham alive and then Wallace ordered him to be flayed alive, that is for his skin to be taken off him. And the story is that Wallace then had a sword belt made out of the flayed skin of Hugo de Cressingham. Which, you know, and nobody likes paying taxes, but that's possibly going a little bit far. 
<laughs> but what I want you to imagine, ladies and gentlemen, ladies, sorry, rather, oh, is right. if you look down there, where those houses are, just on the other side of the 